this is the second part of the graduate entry medicine series and in this video I'm going to cover work experience and entrance exams. I'll also be divulging tips from current graduates. video then make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed then make sure you subscribe and don't forget to turn the bell on so you know when I'm going to release my next video. I'm going to start off by talking about why you need work experience. Now it may seem obvious but there are a few key reasons as to why work experience is so important. Number one to understand the structure and function of the NHS. It's important to understand the role of not only doctors but other healthcare professionals. And it's also important to understand the realities of a medical career, how challenging it can be. Of course it's going to be a rewarding career but there are many challenges and obstacles you may have to encounter along the way. And it's also important to understand if medicine suits your personality type. Finally, one of the big reasons is to ultimately decide if you have the skills and qualities that are needed to become a doctor. So overall, it's really about trying to make an informed decision about choosing your career. So I'm going to categorize work experience into medical and non-medical types. If we start with medical work experience, ideally you want to obtain work experience in a hospital setting. You will read material or hear people say that it's not that important as long as you get work experience in somewhere. If you obtain work experience in a hospital, this will significantly boost your application. Now you can get work experience in a private hospital or NHS hospital. Ideally, you want to make sure that you shadow junior doctors. It's definitely good to speak to consultants and shadow consultants. As a junior doctor, training can be very hard and very intense, and this is what you want to see. So in order to get work experience in a hospital, it is very difficult. But what I would suggest is trying to be a hospital volunteer or work as a healthcare assistant if you're struggling to secure work experience. So you might also want to look into getting work experience in a GP surgery. This might be easier to obtain than getting work experience in a hospital setting. Now ideally you want to be sitting in on clinics. So there are a few things you want to do when you're actually in a GP surgery so that you can make the most out of your work experience placement. The first point applies to the hospital setting as well. MDT or multidisciplinary team working is imperative to ensuring the patient has the best care. When you're at your hospital work experience or GP work experience placement, ensure you look at other team members and see how they play a part in helping the patient. Now for a GP surgery, it's really important to think about and try and observe some of the services that they offer. Do they offer minor procedures? Do they offer specialist clinics? What about travel clinics? Sometimes nurses also offer specialist clinics. It's also important to consider community services. Whereabouts are they? What services are there? How can patients access them? What services are available to the patients and what patients in particular? It's also important to consider a hospice. There are adult and children hospices and it may be worthwhile contacting them to see if you can get a placement there. In a hospice, you also want to think about holistic care. How do the doctors address the patient's mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. How does death impact the patient and the patient's family and loved ones? You may also look into securing work experience in a pharmacy. Pharmacists are very important in the MDT. I work very closely with pharmacists on a often day-to-day -day basis. So a pharmacy might be a really good place to get work experience and relate that back to working as a doctor. In the pharmacy, you might want to think about the role of pharmacological treatments in medicine versus non-pharmacological treatments. Maybe think about what over-the-counter OTC medications there are, which are medications that patients can buy without a prescription. Think about over-the-counter medications and maybe their interactions with medications that the patient's already on. Sometimes pharmacies offer particular services, so whether that's flu vaccinations or whether that's blood tests. Now, because of the current coronavirus pandemic, it may be more difficult to get work experience. Now, there are two virtual work experience placements that are available and that are free. 
that is work experience by the Royal College of Dental Practitioners, the RCGP, and also Brighton and Sussex Medical School. So of course, if you are really struggling to get work experience in a hospital or GP setting, or even if you have work experience already in those settings, it may also be good to secure work experience in other caring environments. So for instance, that could be care homes, maybe befriending older people or volunteering with older people, working in nurseries with young children, and even maybe secure a job in customer services. So you might want to look into applying to a job in retail. As doctors, we have to teach others. That could be students, that could be our colleagues, our peers. And so you may want to get work experience teaching. It could be teaching children, maybe children with um, disabilities. And again, you may want to just volunteer in general, volunteer with people who have long-term health conditions. So how can you secure work experience? As a graduate, one of the advantages you have is that you can apply for jobs. You can apply through the NHS website. I will leave the link in the description box below for you to have a look at. Now, jobs to apply for include healthcare assistant, even medical records clerk. You can even apply for a receptionist job at a GP surgery or hospital. So some hospitals have work experience programs that uh, you can apply to. It is very competitive and sometimes you do have to apply far in advance. And some universities also offer uh, work experience days. So for instance, the University of Oxford offer insight into medicine, which is a day shadowing a hospital consultant. However, this only applies if you are an Oxford graduate or Oxford student. Now, I've also mentioned the virtual work experience placements that you can apply to for free. I would also strongly advise contacting GP surgeries, whether that's phone, email or going in in person, of course, may not happen now, but these are the steps I would take to try and secure work experience. I would also recommend trying to speak to the practice manager or the GP partner who are the people who will be responsible for saying yes or no to a work experience placement. I would also strongly consider contacting doctors in person. When I was applying to medical school, social media wasn't what it is now, but you can leverage social media. You can use social media to contact doctors and I'm sure there might be doctors who will be willing to help you. You can also email doctors as well. You can email the secretary to see if they'll be able to help with work experience placements. You can look into getting work experience abroad. However, I would still strongly recommend that you need to secure work experience in the UK because ultimately you're going to be working in the UK in the NHS and so you need to understand the NHS system. You may want to even think about some of the experience you've gained as a graduate. Did you have any clinical exposure? There are a few other things to consider. Some universities do ask for a specific number of hours. The main thing I would say is that you need to reflect on your work experience. Don't just sit there and describe what you did. You need to reflect on what you learned and relate that back to medicine and being a doctor. I'd also recommend maybe taking a notepad with you or a tablet to make notes as you go along. So now I'm going to briefly go through some of the admissions tests that you will need to get into medical school as a graduate. The first one is the GAMSAT, Graduate Medical School Admissions Test. Then you have the BMAT or Biomedical Admissions Test. And finally, the UCAT or as it was previously known, the UKCAT, which stands for University Clinical Aptitude Test. It's really important before you apply, you look at the university websites to find out which ones that they require. You can find out information about the structure and format of the exam, so I'm not going to discuss them here. Let's talk about the GAMSAT. So for the GAMSAT, you'll have to make an online application. So I've taken this from the website. The GAMSAT test day is made up of five and a half hours of testing time, 25 minutes of reading time, and one hour of recess time. Now on the website, they also talk about pre-testing procedures. So you have to get there quite early and you may finish a little bit late. They also say that they cannot guarantee exact start and finish times. So they advise candidates to be aware that the whole day may be about nine hours. But the main focus of the assessment is your problem solving ability. And I will leave a link in the description box below for more information about the GAMSAT. There are preparation materials, however, you have to purchase them through the website. And I'm just going to talk about some of the universities that require the GAMSAT at this present time. 
So that will be St George's, Nottingham, Swansea and Liverpool. And that's for both their standard and accelerated programmes. And St Andrews and Cardiff require the GAMSAT for their five-year programme. And Plymouth and the University of Exeter also use it for the undergraduate programmes. I've got a tip from a current graduate. So she says the GAMSAT is a very expensive exam at around 265 this year. And it's a very, very long exam, which I've just spoken about. So she says that she personally decided not to sit the GAMSAT due to the expense and she wasn't sure if she would do well in it. She also says revision material for the GAMSAT books costs extra, so consider this as a factor when applying. However, I would still consider it as one of the ways to get into medical school because there are a good number of medical schools that use it. Also, some GAMSAT universities have quite a few spaces, such as St George's, which roughly has 70 spaces, although this may vary each year. She also goes on to say, for the GAMSAT, be aware that each university's cut-off varies from year to year. So for St George's, the cut-off for 2018 and 2019 was 58, whereas in 2017 it was 57. So I'm now going to talk about the BMAT briefly. So for the BMAT, you can sit the test in September, but not this year. This sitting is more expensive. You get your results before the UCAS deadline. But you can sit the test in November, which is £49. Now a key point here is to just take note that not all universities accept the September sitting. Now, the website also has past papers with the answers so it's worth checking that out and I've left a link in the description box below so you can go straight to that part of the website. So universities requiring the BMAT are Oxford but they only require it for their graduate entry course. There's also Cambridge, Imperial, take note that Imperial have suspended their 2020 entry and they say this is due to updating the curriculum. There's also Lancaster, Leeds, UCL, Brighton and Sussex Medical School, and they require the test for their undergraduate courses. So finally, I'm going to talk about the UCAP. So you have the option of sitting the test at home or at a centre, and they have loads of useful resources on the website, and I will again leave a link in the description box below for you. The fees for 2020 sit at £75, but it does vary and it's usually between about £55 to £80 each year. So the following universities require the UCAT, that's Birmingham, King's, Newcastle, Queen Mary's and Warwick, and this is for their graduate or fast track course. But most medical schools use it for their standard entry medical degree. Now I have another tip from the current graduate student. She says, I would therefore advise sitting the UCAT as this will allow you to apply to more medical schools. I would also advise applying to Warwick because they usually have more spaces overall and it will increase your chances of getting into medical school. Whereas when I was applying last year, King's College London only had 25 places, but they have 28 spaces for 2020 entry. So that's a brief summary of the admissions tests. I'm now going to spend a little bit of time divulging some tips from a current UCL student. She says, be aware of the GMC good clinical practice and other medicine related policies. She says, be able to explain how those will affect medical practice. Show the ability to think critically and understand ethics and the difficulty of ethics in medicine. So can you think of day-to-day -day examples of ethical situations a doctor may encounter? One example could be confidentiality. The spouse may come in and ask the doctor for information about their partner, or it could be a mother asking about their child who is actually at the legal age of capacity. She goes on to talk a little bit about the personal statement. She says the personal statement should demonstrate maturity, an ability to work under pressure and manage your time as a four year accelerated GM course is more time consuming. But even with a five year course, there may be financial difficulties. That means you will have to work in order to fund your course. Have you worked while studying before? And if so, what were your grades or degree level results? Her final tip is express your specific medical passions that extend outside your degree. So for example, that could be interesting research, teaching or tutoring, as these are all important parts of a medical career as well as clinical practice. So that was a brief summary of the work experience that you're required to undertake and the admissions tests. 
I hope you found that useful. If you did, then make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already.